Iran's economic indicators may often show negative trends, but Iran's capabilities for economic development are undeniable. And to the sharp eye, those capabilities are investment opportunities. While many mega-European companies had to step away from the Iranian market for fear of U.S. sanctions, medium-sized companies have found Iran to be their untapped oil well. Who knows where those smaller companies might find themselves tomorrow? Iran's market by itself is an 80 million strong one. Never mind the regional market, it would also award prospective investors. That would be a several hundred million strong market. There are problems, but the government is addressing them in hearing criticism. To listen in and to see what opportunities are on offer, what investment opportunities, stay with me, Leila Faramazi, on Iran Today. Iran has the world's second largest known natural gas reserves and fourth largest oil reserves. And those are foreseen to last over a hundred years at current extraction rates. Basically, Iran is an oil economy, but without oil sales since US sanctions cracked down. Not to worry, as oil is not all Iran has. In fact, oil has been both a blessing and a curse, and this country has long wanted to break free of its dependence on oil. Here's an idea how. Mr. Rahfad is an economist and academic. You wouldn't want to miss him if you're looking for a criticism. What can oil revenues be replaced with? Foreign investments, say? We have a great deal of alternative sources. One of the major sources stems from taxation. Since the start of the current calendar year, the stock market produced big revenue in the country. Unfortunately, this revenue was not taxed at all. And in order to encourage natural persons and corporations to invest in stock market, tax relief was granted. This is so strange and incomprehensible. Another taxable source comes from speculation which can yield revenue. It concerns gold, hard currency and real estate which have all been neglected. Another replacement for oil revenues would be foreign investment, preferably investment in industry. Iran already has key industries and what we call mother machinery to keep the manufacture or production rolling. Except that some respective factories have reportedly turned into a commodity to broker from hand to hand. So I asked whether it would be best to attract capital to inject into already existing production lines or to just look to new investment opportunities in tapping the capacities of the country's economy. Our problem is the incorrect use of capital rather than capital shortage. Unfortunately, in recent years, we have failed to make correct use of national hard currency revenue. In 2018 and 2019, as the Central Bank of Iran has reported, we had $180 billion in hard currency revenue and more than $100 billion in hard currency reserve. Had it been managed correctly, we would not have suffered the impact of sanctions. There are problems in Iran, for example, the state or rulership being too present in the economy, external political risks such as US-imposed sanctions, and internal issues such as inflation and bureaucracy. But there is an entity called the Organization for Investment, Economic and Technical Assistance of Iran, through which thousands of medium-sized foreign companies have entered and invested in Iran. Let's hear how they've eased investors in. Mr. Kudey is Director General of the said organization's Foreign Investment Office. So if you're looking to invest in Iran, that would be your point of reference. One of the main obligations of the foreign investment organization is to lead, guide and advise foreign investors. A potential foreign investor would need to get familiar with rules and regulations effective in our country, including labor laws, customs laws and taxation laws. 
At this stage, our experts would provide them with related regulations. The next stage is about feasibility study and market survey. We also help them at this phase. I mean that we have already compiled the available opportunities for investment in compliance with international criteria in English, covering all Iran. We have done so through our investment service centers. To make a jump in production, the country requires investments worth 7,000 to 10,000 billion rials a year. That would be between 23 million and 33.5 million dollars, going by the average free market rate of 300,000 rials to the dollar. How much foreign investment Iran attracted in the first six months of the Persian year beginning 20th March is just under $4 billion. That has been in the form of projects approved by the Foreign Investment Board. In 2019, according to UNCTAD data, we attracted more than $1.5 billion in foreign investment. In 2019, we had an endorsed foreign investment volume of over $5 billion, $1.5 billion of which has been brought into the country. Iran prefers foreign capital invested in this country rather than loans, because investment means importing technology, boosting production and creating more jobs. Also, Dej Pasan, the economy minister, would say, foreign investors can serve as goodwill ambassadors to their own respective countries. That is to say, Iran's interests would be their interests to uphold in addressing their own governments. Now, it is not just foreign nationals Iran welcomes as investors, but also Iranians, citizens of foreign lands. Desh Pasand assures them not to worry about Iranian governments changing hand. We first intend to identify potential investor states. Second, we have to create any opportunities that would be attractive to them. The third point is the way of marketing. For instance, we have started compiling an investment atlas in our country. What does it mean? We used to compile investment opportunities on paper, but now following GIS standards, we are identifying investment opportunities in various provinces. They can click on each province to see the provincial population in addition to investment opportunities. That would also give an estimate of transportation, educated persons and prices. That would provide necessary information for decision making. I named the cons, but the pros to investing in Iran are big ones. Iran has on offer highly specialized, cheap manpower, very cheap energy, and it's strategically located on the east-west economic route. Also, it has access to important roads and the sea. Not to forget, Iran's 80 million strong population has a need for goods, equipment, and large infrastructure projects to do with water, electricity, accommodation, and transport. Where better to invest in? Foreign direct investment or FDI inflows picked up rapidly following the JCPOA or nuclear deal of 2015. That was the deal between Iran and major international powers to curb Iran's nuclear program in return for international economic sanctions to be lifted off this country. It was all well and good till the US pulled out and reimposed UN sanctions as US sanctions also throwing in sanctions on food and medicine. Anyhow, while things went sideways with the West and major Western companies, Iran maintained its strong ties with Russia and China. Mr. Khoshcher is an economist who is not afraid of speaking his mind. He was also an MP. What can Iranian governments do to attract foreign investors in spite of sanctions? Some major trading partners are China, Russia, India, and even South Korea in the energy sector. Proposals have been submitted, but that could not happen overnight because to move from a memorandum to agreement would require a long procedure. After the work starts, we have to accelerate it. Iran has attracted Chinese and Russian investments, mostly in the gas sector. It has now inked an all-encompassing 25-year draft deal with China. That could mean all-round backup by a high-tech economic giant. But the prospect has stirred a lot of concern. What would you say of the 25-year prospective contract with China? 
به نظر من I think the current system of management in the country is not ready for a fair agreement with China. Therefore, I think that the issue of Iran-China agreement has to be spoken about publicly so that our experts would analyze it from various standpoints and find its weaknesses. Unfortunately, there are no details available on any agreement. There are only generalities of a memorandum. China has already invested plenty in Iran. That would be under $27 billion from 2005 to 2019. According to the American Enterprise, of the total investment volume, over $1.5 billion was made in chemical industries, over $11 billion in energy, under $5 billion in metals, $160 million in real estate, under $7 billion in transport, and over $2 billion in utilities. Based on quality planning, we forecast an 8% economic growth in our fifth and sixth five-year economic development plans. But to reach such production, we would need big investment. For instance, we may need $1,200 billion in investment in order to meet our target. Now, in light of the country's conditions, including the drop in oil revenues, the conditions of banks and state budget, which portion of this sum would be sourced domestically? It would be so difficult to provide such sum. Therefore, we would have to turn to foreign investment. China's economic expansion by way of the One Road, One Belt initiative will make Iran a key player in East-West trade. Companies, to be successful, take advantage of Iran's special facilities and proximity to make more profit, ASAP. Iran not only could participate in carrying out the plan within their borders, but they could also be a force to execute the new Silk Road vision in other countries. China's finance minister, Jiao Ji, said this. He spoke at a key event promoting the new Silk Road trade project in Beijing. To make it work, Iran and China will have to cooperate to try to eliminate international regulations that would hinder their bilateral trade. They are considering establishing new correspondent banking relations and opening foreign bank branches in their respective countries. How do you envisage the future role of China and Russia in Iran's economy? China and Russia have been and still are two major trading partners of Iran. Like every other nation, these two have also potential for cooperation. These two nations have traditionally held deep-seated economic relations with Iran. However, we will need a domestic industrial development strategy. We have to define our economic needs with regard to these two countries. Now looking at the world at large and capital it has to offer, FDI in this country has remained impressively considerable against all odds. The government has intervened with measures to motivate or restrict FDI. In 2002, two laws were voted in, a law on incentive and protection of foreign investment and another law to simplify taxation. In 2004, Articles 43 and 44 of the Constitution authorize the government to privatize many sectors, such as banking and transport, and downstream oil and gas industries. The country also has nine free trade zones, not to mention its special economic zones. As with selection of foreign investors and everything, however, the concept of privatization ought to have been studied first, according to Mr. Raghfar.
یه درک غلطی تو ذهن مسئولین کشور وجود Iranian officials have a misperception of privatization and economic liberalization. The economic crisis we are experiencing today is a product of dominance of such thought over the past three decades. When we speak about the private sector, we have to focus on production by the private sector and not in speculation and imports of luxury commodities. Under such conditions, the basic needs have not been met while the production sector is weakened further on a daily basis. More production units including food production plants that are strategic like chicken barns and vegetable products have been weakened more and more. Also, to attract foreign investment and promote knowledge transfer, buyback systems have been established. How it works is a foreign investor's revenues are safe, as they can be repatriated in the form of goods and services produced by the project. There are plenty of privileges available to investors who would provide long-term strategies and transfer of technologies. Talk of free trade zones brings me to ports. Despite restrictions imposed by the coronavirus, Iranian ports managed to attract a good amount of investment, which will be covered in the next section. There's plenty more to be said on the PMO and its ports. For statistics in that regard and more in other media outlets, I give you Shahrzad. Hi, my name is Shahrzad Mahanchiri and we'll be reviewing the latest update on Iran's economic outlook amid hardships created by sanctions. Tehran Times reports Iran's resilient economy priority projects yielding fruit in sanctions era. It has been years since Iran decided to pursue a resilient economy that is less dependent on oil and more focused on developing other aspects like refining petrochemicals and industry. In this regard, the Iranian government has been defining several prioritized projects each year under the framework of a plan for moving towards the prospects of the oil-free resilient economy. And a resilient economy command headquarters has also been established to supervise the affairs related to these projects and ensure a smooth and continuous movement towards the mentioned goals. In the previous Iranian year, ending on March 19th, 76 projects were introduced and implemented across the country, and in the current calendar year too, 110 prioritized projects have been defied for the country's ministries to pursue. According to the first vice president, Ishaq Jahangiri, out of 110 prioritized projects for the current year, 60 projects have gone operational, the official said in a meeting of the Resilient Economy Headquarters. The Financial Tribune states tax on production sector to shift to consumers. A 4-5% decline in the production sector's tax rate has been envisioned in the next fiscal year's budget, March 2021 to 2022. Tax on consumption, however, will increase next year. Mohammad Bagher Nobach, the head of plan and budget organization, was quoted as saying by Mehr News Agency. In the fiscal year of 2019 to 2020, the relatively smaller size of the budget deficit, the availability of foreign exchange reserves from the National Development Fund of Iran, and the untapped potential of debt bonds prevented by the deficit's after effects from impacting the economy to some degree. In the current fiscal year, March 2020 to 2021, the widening budget deficit, the reliance of budget on financial bonds, the drastic fall in oil prices, petroleum products, tax revenues, and the mounting costs of the coronavirus outbreak are bound to compound the government's economic woes. In an article by Tehran Times, we witnessed proper ground for investment making prepared at ports of Iran. Iran, which has adopted the strategy of boosting its non-oil export to counter the U.S. sanctions on its economy, has many programs underway for the development of its ports regarding the significant role of the ports in the promotion of exports. In this regard, the country has the attraction of investment to the ports on agenda, and despite the restrictions and limitations created by the outbreak of the coronavirus, Iranian ports managed to attract 3.57 trillion riyals, over $85 million of investment in the first quarter of the current Iranian calendar year, March 20th to June 20th. The mentioned investments have been done mainly with the aim of developing and maintaining infrastructure and equipping ports. Also to facilitate business in the country's ports, 2.836 trillion riyals, about $67.5 million, was invested by the private sector in the form of five contracts during the said period. 
Accordingly, the total amount of non-governmental investment in the country's commercial ports has reached 161.325 trillion rials, about $3.83 billion in the form of 333 contracts. That's all for this segment. We'll see you next week. Some achievements worth noting with regard to ports are six floating wharves for passengers and tourism in Soheli and Gurzin ports in Resh and Hengam Islands in the southern Hormozgan province. Also, the third phase of Shahid Rajoy ports development project has been continued. To increase the level of investments, PMO has in past years changed its approach from authority and ownership to supervision and support. PMO standing for Ports and Maritime Organization. Packages and regulations are also being updated to appeal to investors. A percentage of government revenues from maritime trade activities are being allocated to developing coastal areas and protecting the marine environment. Another investment opportunity the government is eager to promote is the stock market. Sanctions, oil prices crashing and the COVID invasion are all a reality. Yet the Tehran Stock Exchange, TSE, boasts one of the top performing equity indexes in the world. However, that too has its cynics. Focusing on production cannot materialize with mere slogans. Rather, production should be the most profitable amongst economic activities, and that would require working out necessary mechanisms. When stock market speculation yields a 2,000% annual profit, no economic actor of investor would invest in production to face numerous challenges including manpower, taxation and rules and regulations. Attracting foreign investors is attractive enough, but market officials are banking on the idea of also launching an international stock market in the domestic free trade zones. The southern Kish free trade zone on the Persian Gulf would be one ready example. Iran has long wanted to extract oil revenues from its budget basket, at least as a mainstay. And oil sanctions, with all the hardship they've caused, may have been a blessing along those lines. However, oil will always maintain a spot for itself. And that is evident in the fact that the lion's share of the gains with the TSE have come from energy firms, as they are still the country's main source of foreign exchange revenue. Important as oil still is, some would say exchange rates, or rather the value of national currency, is yet more important. Another man. For me, the most significant issue now is to save the national currency. We have other problems like inflation, but the value of our national currency, that is the artery of our country, you can liken it to a scene of accident where blood is spilled. The key issue would be to stop the flow of blood to save the injured. Therefore, we have to save the national currency. There are other ways to help the economy pick up than stock markets and capital flowing in from abroad. One way is taxing, or rather tax regulating. It's not just a matter of how much tax, however, but who is taxed. Smuggling of goods is now safe from taxation. We have more than $25 billion in contraband. So is speculation. It is profitable without being subject of any taxation. Therefore, taxes have to be raised, but some preconditions have to be met first. Therefore, the alternative would be fair and reasonable taxation. Now, aristocracy in Iran is paying no tax. I'm not opposed to welfare, but if anyone is enjoying such welfare, has to pay taxes like everywhere else in the world. If in foreign countries luxury cars are used, taxes are also paid, and these taxes are spent on public transportation. But in Iran, aristocracy is paying nothing. Actually, employment and oil are short- and medium-term concerns, according to Mr. Khoshchehre. They are not imperative. What is urgent is the fast-declining power of the rial, or its sharp fluctuations. The devaluation of the rial to the dollar, although a bad thing for the Iranian people, is a blessing for exporters of goods and services. Media attention is to blame or credit for the psychological factor that famously does affect 
currency fluctuations on the free market. However, the effect is minimal given Iran's unique circumstances. In this country, the dollar, hard currency, is treated as a tradable commodity. There's plenty to be said on the Iranian economy and how the nation itself can help. But as far as our focus on foreign investment goes, the choice should be quite easy for companies interested in dealing with West Asia. It's a choice between an alliance with America and its declining power in the region and guaranteed long-term economic benefits with Iran and its region of influence. That's it for today. Thanks for watching from the whole team. Do watch again at the same times next week and each week after as you never know what's on. And don't forget to leave your comments and topic requests. Bye for now.